Um, Dr. Henry, I'm wondering if you can just sort of react or spell out for us how meaningful this approval of the Moderna vaccine is. I've, I've read that it's going to be described as sort of the workhorse vaccine relative to Pfizer because it's more mobile. How big of a breakthrough is this for British Columbians? You know what? It is, um, it, it is as you say, a, a, something we've been hoping for for some time and we've been waiting for and planning for. So yes, it does allow us to move things. Both of these vaccines are very similar technology. They use messenger RNA and we're learning a lot about how this technology, how stable it is when it's being moved around and um, how stable the, the lipid nanoparticle is that's surrounding it so that um, that gift wrapping, if you will, around the, the messenger RNA piece. And uh, they're both slightly different and very similar. Um, we know that uh, they do travel well frozen, and we've proved that with the Pfizer vaccine. So with the Moderna vaccine, not only does it not have to be in an ultra-low temperature freezer, so we do have more minus 20 freezers around the province, but we can also store it for a longer period of time at fridge temperature which is uh, uh, minus two to eight. And so that is really important. That allows us to, to get it out to many other places. And most importantly right now, to take it to some of our more remote communities, um, because we can also break it down, as I mentioned, be to, uh, to uh, 100 dose aliquots. It comes in, in 10 dose vials. So that means we have a lot more flexibility. We can go into a community once and be able to immunize people and not waste any vaccine because that's the other part that's so important right now when we have limited supplies. We also are now able to move the Pfizer vaccine. So particularly in some of our urban areas, we can move the Pfizer vaccine effectively, either frozen, and then be able to use it in several different places within the parameters of the, of the time limit. So uh, both of these things are really good news and uh, make our life <laughs> a little bit brighter on the horizon. Um, so yes, it is. Uh, I, I think both of these things are incredibly important and things that we've been looking forward to. And the Moderna vaccine in particular, um, having the flexibility. And I just uh, can't wait to get it out there. Rob, do you have a follow-up? I do. I'm wondering if you can give us a sense as to when on Vancouver Island specifically the Moderna vaccine will, will first be administered to folks here. And I'm thinking about like if, you, if you're able to give people in long-term care homes, if they're the first priority residents there, roughly when might a resident of a long-term care home on the island expect to get the Moderna vaccine? Yeah, very good question. So we have limited doses that are coming into Canada next week, December 28th, and they will be going, uh, the amount that we have in um, British Columbia, um, yet to be fully confirmed, but will be going to all areas of the province. So there will be some uh, coming to Vancouver Island, and uh, I know Vancouver Island Health Authority is working on identifying exactly which care homes will, will be uh, um, targeted first. So uh, my expectation is it will be sometime next week. Pfizer can go to care homes as well. Yeah, yeah. and the, the, we are looking as well at when Pfizer can be taken into care homes around the province. Um, with weather, with transport, with all of these things, I, I can't say what specific day, but we've been told by the, the NOC, it's called, the National Operations Centre around the vaccine supply that we should expect um, both uh, our Pfizer doses and Moderna doses uh, starting uh, as early as Monday the 28th. Next question is from Jane Side, North Shore News. Hi, Dr. Henry. Um, I want to ask you some questions about uh, the vaccination program as well. Um, I've had some people ask, what about the long-term care residents who've already had COVID, either in the first wave of the pandemic in March or the second wave? Do they get the vaccine um, as well, and sort of where are they in the lineup? I'm just wondering if it matters if you've actually um, had COVID already. That's a really good question, and we all, we all ask that question too. So the short answer is we don't know how long immunity after infection lasts, but we do know it's probably for at least a few months. So somebody who had it, a confirmed infection in the first wave, absolutely would be uh, um, first in line uh, in long-term care, um, but this applies to people in the community as well. So yes, you can get the vaccine, and we recommend it for people, even if they've had a, a, a lab-confirmed case of, of COVID. 
Um, but if you are somebody who's had it recently, then we know you have some protection for a period of time. So you may not be the first priority in that case. But yes, it, it certainly uh, doesn't have any of negative effects. And what we believe it will do, um, knowing how other vaccines work, will boost that immune response that you got from the infection. Jane, do you have a follow-up? Um, yeah, also related to the vaccines, um, you mentioned the first dose and the second dose. Um, if uh, you've just got the first dose and you haven't gotten your second dose yet, do we know, um, you know, what kind of immunity you might have and, and what kind of program do we have sort of to ensure uh, follow-ups and second doses because that can sometimes be um, more of an issue, I guess, getting people in on time for their second dose. Absolutely. Yeah. Also really good questions. Um, so we've looked at the data. It's just recently become available. So the National Advisory Committee on Immunization and Health Canada, of course, in, in uh, approving the vaccines, had access to all of the study data from the large, uh, there was about 44,000 people in the Pfizer study and uh, similar numbers in the Moderna study. So in those studies, the data showed that people got either the, the vaccine or a placebo and then they followed them out and they got their second dose somewhere between, uh, in both of these studies it averaged around 28 days, but it ranged from, um, I think it was 20 to uh, 45 days. So somewhere in there. And we followed people and they followed everybody who got sick. And what we know from the Pfizer vaccine is that between the first dose and the second dose, um, the protection was at least 50%. But that included people who got sick even in the first week after receiving their first dose, which means that they may not have yet developed the antibodies from the vaccine. So if we look at just the people um, in the study between uh, from seven days or 14 days after getting their first dose before they got their second dose, um, the protection was about 80%. And the same data for the Moderna vaccine shows again, the protection's about 80%. And then after the second dose, that protection goes up to about 95%. So what that tells us is you get really good protection from the first dose, especially in the short term. What we don't know is how long that protection lasts. And that's what the second dose helps with, making sure it lasts longer. Um, and the studies are still ongoing to see how long that will be. That's why we have made the decision to maximize the number of people who get that really good protection. You know, 80% is, is more than we could hope for for a lot of vaccines um, to get that really good protection during this time when we know there's still a lot of COVID circulating in our communities. So we're optimizing that by stretching out a little bit when people are going to receive their second dose, start receiving their second dose. And as more vaccine becomes available, we'll be able to, to bring that back down again. But so we're looking at 35 days as the how we're going to try and manage it over the next little while. And yes, we're putting in the uh, systems so every dose that people are receiving gets into our provincial registry and that allows us to know when people are coming up for new uh, for their second dose and they will be notified. Right now, as you know, most people who are getting the vaccine are healthcare workers and people in long-term care. So we know exactly who they are and how to find them. Um, but this will get more complicated as we move more vaccine into the community. So we are setting up these what we call reminder recall systems. And we do have some in our health authorities that we use for childhood immunizations to bring children back at the time they need their doses, et cetera. But uh, there is a lot of work going on right now to try and um, scale that up in a way that we can make sure we don't miss anybody. But uh, right now, uh, in some ways, it's good that we're starting slow because we're getting all of those processes worked out.